the uh, Association of Former Members of Congress to be the perfect uh, transition from Congress back into civil society and civic society. We need more civility, that's for sure. And uh, they offer so many programs and opportunity for people in both parties, and they press uh, and enforce the bipartisanship of it. They bring the idea that we love the institution where we serve, but we also want to talk about what needs to be done to make it even better. We have an incredible congressional study group on Europe. Uh, we have a congressional study group on um, a number of other, Japan. Uh, they're just starting one now on Korea. I love that um, with the association, we travel around to all of these different schools. We do Congress on your uh, campus and meeting with students and talking with them about the value of public service. And I think it's increasingly important in a world in which um, people don't value public service in the way that we used to because we need to be able to grow that next generation of leadership. And besides that, I get inspired by young people. We're really embarking on bringing Congress to the campus, to college campuses, to talk about civility and debate because um, you can't have bipartisanship, you can't have a Congress that works without having some civility in, in how these issues are, are debated and discussed. I think they're surprised that Republicans and Democrats can actually have a civil debate or discussion when we actually go to campuses and talk about issues that are fairly contentious. Right. Well, it gives former members an opportunity to stay in touch with one another, which is good. Secondly, I think it allows us to continue to engage in our, our desire to provide some public service, uh, even though we've all gone off into the private sector or maybe we're teaching or even just completely retired. We all went into public service because we believe there's a need, a calling for public service, and so this fulfills that. Well, I think uh, former members do have some, some uh, sway in, in that. We're respected among our peers. Uh, obviously, I serve with a number of those who are still serving, who are in leadership positions, and uh, because of what I was able to contribute during my time in Congress and the reputation I built, uh, they still ask for advice. And um, which is, you know, I'm happy to do it and don't feel fettered by, you know, political considerations. I can actually speak freely about what I think. Isn't that sad that we can't speak freely once you're in Congress, only when you're after or you're retiring? Well, to us, it, it is. We talked about a collaborative effort with Congress to help them understand how to sustain a democracy and build on it and understanding the judgment that former members have in providing compromise to get things done. In the next 50 years, I'd like to see FMC much more involved with influencing Congress to sustain our democracy and build Congress in a way that we understand that collegiality as well as compromise is important. And really, I think uh, members of Congress uh, should realize all the experience with former members of Congress is ex vast and extensive. And it reminds me of the expression by the former Secretary of State, Dean Acheson, under President Harry Truman when he said brains is no substitute for judgment. And in former members of Congress Association, we have a huge amount of judgment. I think it's always been a privilege to work with former members of Congress, both an honor and a privilege because you work with these people in a different way, but now you're working with them in a bipartisan way to sustain democracy and help improve our country. I was only a two-term congressman, but I, I love the camaraderie, I love the discussion of issues, I especially liked what the former members were doing on an international basis. And um, I was at the time the president of the International Republican Institute. And so this gave me an opportunity to expand those connections and to uh, move the uh, uh, members forward into some new avenues. Well, when I uh, retired from Congress, I was looking to maintain my uh, personal relationship with many of the people I had worked with in Congress, uh, many of whom were good friends and for whom I had great respect. Uh, secondly, I was looking for ways in which I could uh, use my experience in Congress to contribute to uh, uh, serve the community at large. And the association uh, filled both of those needs very well. While we can't be sure about what the future will hold, we can be certain that uh, it will still be very important uh, for people that served in Congress to share their experiences with uh, the public at large, uh, to uh, stimulate uh, particularly young people 
to take an interest in community service and participate uh, in their responsibility to engage uh, in dealing with these uh, problems which we can't anticipate today but which we know will be significant. And the association performs that function now and I think it's uh, pretty clear that there'll be a real need for it 50 years from now as well. At the beginning it was somewhat of a, a social club and uh, it certainly is not that any longer. It's got much involved in uh, programs. Uh, it, it's almost like a well-run business organization of former members of Congress. And uh, as a result, it has a very good relationship with the present members of Congress, but it also uh, backs them up and helps them and uh, gives them an opportunity to travel and, and to talk about things uh, outside of the congressional buildings. Uh, campus to College was one of my very favorite programs, and that's when a Republican and a Democrat would go to a college and spend a day and a half, two, well usually it was two and a half days, talking to the students. And the students could see a Republican and a Democrat, the different points of view, but how well they got along. And so it, it was an educational uh, type of operation, because as you know, our political situation isn't exactly the same anymore. Uh, Republicans stay with Republicans, the Democrats stay with Democrats, but on the trips for former members uh, and go to, to go to other countries, uh, it, it's Republican and Democrat, and there's not the kind of a feeling that we unfortunately have now. Uh, we honor Republicans and Democrats. I really think uh, former members is a dimension of the Congress uh, that makes it stronger before and after. And uh, I, I've been very proud to be the treasurer and the uh, secretary and the vice president and the president. I, I am very proud of the organization and I continue to and want to remain active. The programming has just uh, mushroomed. Uh, uh, we've had a lot of uh, additional people uh, involved in the organization, many more former members uh, than I think in the past. Many of them have gone out to college campuses, many of them have taken part in uh, uh, meetings with uh, foreign leaders, <coughs> excuse me, foreign parliamentarians as they come to the United States. Uh, I think it's, uh, the organization is uh, really, uh, it's always been a good organization, but it's accelerated, I believe, during the last two years. Again, building on the work of previous presidents and, uh, and the work that Pete had done over the years. When you leave Congress, you lose touch with a lot of people. And uh, I saw the uh, FMC as a way to see them regularly, to work with them on a variety of matters. But it really was a way for me to see uh, friends and to make some new friends because when you're in Congress, you don't always get to know people in the other party that well. But I've done a lot of things on a bipartisan basis, excuse me, a lot of things on a bipartisan basis with uh, former Republican members, which I've thoroughly enjoyed and uh, gotten to see a lot of my friends that I otherwise might not come in contact with at all. So it's really been a way to stay in touch with the people that I enjoyed serving with.